Uh, there has been a small, maybe, victory in the Alec... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use the word wars, because I don't want to do, like, Ted Nugent. <laughs> but the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the effort... Accountability. To, yeah, kind of, oh, that's, that's a fine word. Okay, so, so uh, you know, what's happened? Well, uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council, this, this front group, uh, has existed for some 30 years, uh, but in the last couple of weeks, uh, a lot of activist groups, civil rights groups, watchdog organizations have been calling the organization out and its corporate financiers. And in the last few days, uh, over 10 companies have dropped their membership, uh, everyone from the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association to Kraft Foods and McDonald's. Didn't the company that makes Skittles drop their, drop their affiliation? Yeah, it's mostly uh, consumer uh, brand conscious companies. So right. Mars Inc., the company that owns Skittles, they didn't want to be associated with, you know, these, these discriminatory voter ID laws, uh, shoot first laws, uh, these things that any consumer brand uh, would recoil from uh, when associated with. And, and that's the reason that companies join Alex, because they hope that they can uh, be anonymous uh, while they pursue a very nasty lobbying agenda. So, of course, when, when folks call out Alec and, and show the world what they're up to, uh, companies with consumer brands are backing away. Right. Now, it, it sounds like good news that Alex is no longer going to be pushing voter ID laws that disenfranchise mostly college students, elderly, the poor, and people who live in cities uh, that have good enough transit systems that they can't, that they don't buy cars, or people who are poor enough they can't afford to buy a car, so don't need a driver's license. Uh, it sounds like a good thing that they're going to stop doing that, but those laws are already in place in a whole bunch of states. The shoot first laws are already in place in a whole bunch of states. Um, a and B, this is going to mean that they've just got that much more time and money to spend doing things like deregulating polluters. Well, that's a great point, Tom. Uh, even though uh, the new public awareness and these companies dropping their association might seem like a positive step, the sad reality is. Uh, these laws are already on the books. Um, a lot of them are very fresh. Um, the repeal efforts haven't picked up steam. And in terms of real political terms, uh, I don't see much of a difference uh, being made this year because uh, there, isn't, uh, there aren't enough legislators out there uh, who are calling for a repeal of these laws. And uh, there's still many well-funded uh, interests pushing them in other states. So although this is uh, a welcome development, what's happened in the last few days, I'm not sure if it'll substantively change the public policy that's already been made. We're talking with Lee Fong. RepublicReport.com is the website, or .org, excuse me, RepublicReport.org. And, uh, Lee, you, you guys have broken actually several stories, or covered several stories, or both, uh, in the last week that, that caused my eyebrows to raise. What, in your mind, were some of the more interesting ones, or well, important uh, ones? Uh, you know, one story that's kind of breaking... Uh, that we posted last afternoon uh, is concerning Congressman Tim Holden, this Pennsylvania Democrat. He's a, a blue dog congressman. He's up in a very tight race against a progressive uh, attorney. The election is next week. Well, it's really interesting. This is kind of like a mini mo money and politics story. One month before the election, Congressman Holden introduced a, a bill that allows agribusiness in the mid-Atlantic region to dump unlimited amounts of waste and pollution into the Chesapeake Bay. Surprise, surprise, now all of the big agribusiness political action committees are rushing in with 11th hour contributions to save their corrupt congressmen. So this is just another example of how uh, members of Congress will uh, peddle corporate interests to save their own careers, uh, mm -hmm. but disavowing or just uh, disregarding, I should say, the public interest. And this guy's a Democrat. It, this it's is a Democrat. It, 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 this this really speaks to the the corruption of uh, the American political process by the Supreme Court's uh, series of decisions, really since the '70s and arguably since since the mid 19th century, but especially since the 1970s, since since uh, Lewis Powell was put on the court, that that uh, increasingly assert that corporations have rights of persons and that money is not property as we always thought of it, but that it's speech. Well, there, there's, a, there's a silver lining here, uh, at least in this election, maybe not for the big picture, but at least in this election, this particular Democrat uh, voted against the, the Disclose Act, this legislative package that was supposed to fix some of the problems caused by Citizens United. 
So now it looks uh, like Holden will lose this primary. We, we don't know for sure, um, but uh, there will be one less pro-corporate Democrat uh, in the party if he loses next week. So this progressive might actually successfully challenge him. Well, it's, it's a funny story because, you know, although that the progressive might win, uh, it's only because of uh, redistricting. Uh, this new seat that Holden has to compete in uh, was gerrymandered so that Republicans overall across the state in Pennsylvania can basically save their own seats in the, in the coming election. So, so they you know, carved out a super Democratic district in order to get all the Democrats out of the various Republican districts so that the Republican seats became safe. And therefore, that super Democratic district, now the Democrat doesn't feel like he has to be kind of half Republican, uh, although he still is. But I mean, you, you know, he's, that that district will actually now support a progressive. Am I, is that my, am I making sense here? That's precisely correct. So in, in one way, the public interest is taking one step forward because uh, this corrupt blue dog might lose this election. But in another sense, they're taking two steps backwards because lots of other pro-corporate, pro-big business congressmen are now in safe seats all over Pennsylvania. You're right, the Republicans. Um, has there, have there been any efforts in the last century to do away with gerrymandering to say that congressional districts must have you know, must be, uh, 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 I, I forget the word from geometry class, you know, but uh, no more than well, orthogonal, you know, <laughs> hexagonal. Well, I mean, there, there, there have been efforts to use uh, very neutral uh, computer algorithms to, you know, uh, keep communities together, not racially discriminate, that sort of thing. Right. Um, but of course, uh, they've been killed by both parties because, you know, in places like Illinois and California, Democrats have, have pushed. Uh, for absolute party hegemony, uh, at the same time, all over the South, uh, Republicans, where they've been, you know, taking state houses and taking the governorship in state after state, uh, right. they're reaping what they sow. So uh, it's it's a, it's a bipartisan problem. Well, and th these are the kind of things where we, the people, need to get active. I mean, these are the kinds of issues where I think grassroots activism, and and frankly, although I don't know of any Republicans who are speaking out against this, there are progressive Democrats who talk about this. Yeah, and, you know, um, but back to California, there have been some structural reforms. They had a, a citizen board uh, that was set up to draw the lines evenly and fairly. Um, at the end of the day, you know, ProPublica, this, you know, investigative outfit, found that uh, a lot of incumbent Democrats, uh, AstroTurf, they created lots of fake citizen groups to still even manipulate what was supposed to be a neutral citizens commission to yeah. draw the lines in a fair way so it's it's a very difficult problem to address that's unfortunate uh, you know it's it's unfortunate that that to some extent both political parties you know to to a substantial extent both political parties basically have to have money in order to function and and we should we should have a political system that doesn't require money to be to function republic report is doing a good job of calling out people who are who are dancing to the tune of money uh, but we really just need to get the money out of the politics. You know, Bernie Sanders' proposal of, of uh, publicly funded elections makes a lot of sense to me. Anyhow, Lee That's Fong. Well Thank you. Yeah, republicreport.org is the website. Lee, thanks a lot for being with us today.